Hello, and thank you for attending. My name is Calvin Giddens, and I am presenting on behalf of Emergent Space Technologies. This presentation, entitled Source to Source Code Transformation and Generation Using Abstract Syntax Trees, will explain code generation strategies and hard won lessons I learned while developing a robust, flexible code generation framework for Emergent. In this presentation, I will begin with an overview of why code generation is a necessary capability for modern space missions. I will then provide an explanation of the current state of the art at NASA, and then dive into how I have improved upon the state of the art with Fractal, a code generation framework, and the capabilities we have achieved as a company with Yeti, our domain specific application of Fractal to the mission software space. Uh, let's start with an introduction. My background is in ASIC bringup for high performance and low power augmented reality and virtual reality applications uh, with a focus on signal and image processing. Uh, I was extremely fortunate to spend a number of years working with a very talented team in Israel that was responsible, among other things, for designing depth sensors and associated driver hardware for Magic Leap, Apple, and Microsoft Connect. They showed me how metaprogramming is critical for rapid hardware iteration and FPGA-based development of ASIC firmware. I also spent time building up generative signal processing pipelines that were parameterized as directed graphs. Upon rejoining the space sector, I set out applying these techniques to the task of reducing development and integration time for flight software, and I was excited to discover that they are equally effective for modeling, simulation, ground, and test software as well. So let's dive in. Traditionally, buses have proved to be the largest integration task for typical small, small sat missions. However, as commercial off the shelf small sats have proliferated, the industry is moving towards software posing a larger integration task than the bus itself for typical small sat missions. The numerous heterogeneous components of a typical mission result in many different representations of telemetry and command data, with each representation requiring a management system and associated translation layers. Maintaining these by hand is time consuming and prone to human error. However, the relationships between these representations and the structure of their translation layers can typically be encapsulated in a few concise rules, making them ideal candidates for code generation. In general, the goal is to maintain a single universal artifact for each message from which all other formats are generated programmatically. So now I will go over the existing solutions at NASA. So um, NASA uses a tool called CFS Command and Data Dictionary for telemetry management. CCDD was designed from an operations perspective. Uh, and as such is not focused on easy integration into a modern development workflow. It is dependency heavy and uses a SQL database for storing message definitions, which can be local or on a centralized server. This database must be completely rebuilt after any changes to the underlying telemetry definitions, which can take upward of 30 minutes and must be restart restarted from the beginning if any bugs are encountered. The database is not manageable by modern version control systems, and locks developers into a very specific and rigid workflow that cannot be easily deviated from. Uh, it also uses a regex-based parser, which has limited syntactical capabilities. So through my work with NASA Ames for the Starling cluster flight demonstration mission, it became clear to me that there is a strong need for a lightweight, flexible, developer-centric solution that runs quickly and generates version controllable artifacts that can be ingested into CCDD for mission operations. And so I set out to develop such a solution for Emergent. So uh, now I'll talk about how I achieved this. Um, so uh, what is context-free parsing like regex? So while context-free grammars such as regex have many advantages, including simplicity, consistency, and rigid formality, they're fundamentally incomplete when used to parse context-sensitive languages such as C++ or Python. Each permutation of syntactical elements must be explicitly supported in context-free grammars, resulting in CCDD being unable to parse a meaningful subset of valid C and C++ syntax. For example, placing a ternary operator inside array indices provides a solution for compile time value checking that does not require the use of static assert. 
However, this permutation of syntactical elements must be explicitly supported in CCDD and is not and is therefore not available. Uh, if you if you put this code into CCDD, it will break. Uh, so due to the complexity of CCDD, there is no immediate path available for mission integrators to extend CCDD to support features uh, such as generic templates uh, or complex expressions and function bodies. Uh, so context sensitive parsers are much more powerful and allow for structural and semantic analysis of code. To maximize flexibility, they treat code as a complex data structure instead of as a simple text stream. These structures are recursively self-consistent, allowing for easy traversal and an inherent ability to represent arbitrary permutations of syntactical elements. This is the strategy employed by most modern compilers. Uh, however, to achieve this flexibility, they require the use of many components operating in tandem, including a preprocessor, lexer, parser, and semantic analyzer, and they lack the rigid formalism of context-free grammars. Um, what that means is bad designs can you know, blow up in size as complexity increases. Um, so the selection of abstract syntax trees as the primary data structure for representing source code has been the subject of much research uh, dating back to the advent of computer science um, and the Apollo programs, and as such will not be covered in this presentation. Um, abstract syntax trees are a superset of parse trees and represent syn syntactical elements as nodes in a tree-like data structure. Uh, in this example, there's a class declaration variable declaration with an initializer and uh, a type def declaration and they're all inside a namespace declaration uh, an overly simplified ast is shown on the right with the translation unit or file scope serving as the top node in the tree enclosed in the namespace declaration are the class variable and type def declarations with the child branches of each node consisting of their associated syntactical elements including field and method declarations initializers and comments Uh, so now I will introduce Fractal. Fractal, or Framework for Reuse of Code Transformation Logic, was designed to enable easy reuse of transformation logic between missions with different code generation pipelines. To explain how I iterated to a design that successfully implements this capability, I will first go over version 1.0 and the lessons learned from it. Version 1.0 used a four-stage pipeline with the code generation flow directed by a simple custom scripting language. Each stage was responsible for a portion of the code generation process, such as parsing code or transforming code. Put together, the four stages created a complete pipeline. It had a number of design choices that became sticking points down the road, such as JSON syntax trees that lacked recursive self-consistency and had to be written by hand, um, as well as tight coupling between the four stages of the pipeline. Uh, contextual information uh, was passed between the stages alongside the syntax trees through direct function calls. This also became a sticking point. Um, so I learned a number of valuable lessons the hard way from version 1.0. Having each stage dependent on the other stages for key capabilities, such as parsing text or transforming uh, syntax trees, led to an extremely tight coupling and meant that new features, such as new elements in the syntax tree, had to be supported across all stages of the pipeline. Uh, and the reason for this is because they typically resulted in changes to the function-based interfaces between all the stages. This led to a four times scaling of feature development effort for four stages. Furthermore, uh, while handwriting a bespoke non-recursive syntax tree uh, specification led to very condensed syntax trees, um, the problem with this was that adding new syntactical elements uh, quickly became an inconsistent nightmare. Uh, and lastly, uh, the custom scripting language turned out to be far more effort than writing a simple Python API. So with those lessons in mind, I developed a number of crucial design constraints for version 2.0 that resulted in an entirely new architecture. The polynomial scaling of complexity quickly became intractable and was the primary reason for the redesign. So a reduction in interstage coupling was the primary design objective for version 2.0. Uh, with that in mind, structural formalism was imposed wherever possible. 
All contextual information was embedded directly into the syntax trees by tagging nodes with attributes. For example, specifying byte alignment of data primitives is achieved by tagging their syntactical elements in the tree with an alignment attribute instead of configuring an entire stage or pipeline to generate specific alignments. <clears throat> Unrecognized syntactical elements or attributes are passed over silently in order to, to minimize interstage incompatibilities. Interstage interfaces are no longer function-based and consist of raw data exchange only. Uh, input output is rigidly constrained to fully recursible YAML syntax trees only. Stages must be fully self-contained and be capable of running in isolation. Um, the syntax tree specification itself underwent a wholesale redesign and is now based off of an industry standard format. Lastly, the custom scripting language was replaced with an object-oriented Python API. <clears throat> so the name Fractal is a nod to the fact that the structure of uh, both the framework and the data upon which it operates are both recursible. Uh, both are treated as directed graphs with code generation pipelines separated into small atomic logical chunks known as process nodes. Each node performs its task and passes the resultant syntax tree to the next process node in the process graph uh, in the style of TensorFlow networks. In this example pipeline, there are five stages, each with its own task, such as extracting subsections of code, performing data sanitization, such as type checking, transforming the graphs, and generating code. The, now, uh, the pipeline splits. You can see there are six stages. The pipeline splits after the first transformation node, resulting in two pipelines that share common logic that only has to run once. Similarly to the process graph, all data operations are treated as graph transforms applied to a syntax tree, such as branch and leaf printing. To maximize logic reuse, process nodes can be combined into multi-stage subgraphs that are packageable and transferable between different pipelines. So in this example, those first three stages in the graph can be packaged up and passed between pipelines. As a result of this design, code transformation logic actually became simpler and more condensed as new features were added to Fractal instead of becoming more bloated and complex. So these process nodes, what are they? Uh, the entirety of the Fractal API uh, is contained in a single process node. Um, the developer implements custom process nodes uh, by deriving them from a base class, a base process node class, that takes care of the intensive boilerplate required for code generation. Uh, this boilerplate includes parsing code streams into serialized syntax trees, loading syntax trees into memory, traversing the syntax trees using a visitor pattern, encoding the transformed trees back into a serialized format, and passing the data onto the next process node in the graph. A number of well-defined hooks are provided to the developer in the form of callbacks implemented in the derived class, and commonly used graph transformed graph transforms are provided as class methods. So the import layer of a process node is responsible for parsing a text stream of C or C++ code into a syntax tree. Um, and we provide hooks to uh, implement other languages as well. But right now, we have it working for C and C++ code. Uh, to accomplish this, for C and C++, I implemented a custom tooling front end for the Clang 11 compiler that stops short of generating LLVM and instead renders the in-memory syntax tree into a YAML format. This was by far the most challenging and time-consuming aspect of the development effort uh, because even Clang's best-in-class syntax tree format is chock full of idiosyncrasies that had to be individually accounted for and made self-consistent. Uh, in the interest of generating an easily transformable YAML syntax tree. Although recursing uh, a syntax tree and blindly spitting out uh, syntactical elements into a text stream will result in correct code, uh, a more powerful approach is required to enable generation of arbitrary code. Uh, the declarative nature of syntax trees makes them ideal for use with templating frameworks, which are heavily used in web development for rendering HTML pages. Now, we chose Jinja due to its widespread use and robust ongoing support. Uh, Esteban Duran has been responsible for implementing Fractal's templating system. Jinja templates have proven to be extremely quick to write and debug, 
and Fractal's templating framework matches a specific template to each AST node type, allowing for arbitrarily deep nesting of templates. So here is an example of the Fractal API, uh, previously referred to as the process node API. They're one and the same thing. Uh, in the first two lines of this API example, you can see how process nodes are packaged and imported in Python, which is Python modules. Uh, so uh, the second line there with input headers, uh, we're creating a list of input files. Um, and then in the next section, uh, we construct three process nodes for extracting, transforming, and generating data. In the next section, uh, we string these three nodes together into a process graph. This graph object is also a process node uh, and can be transferred freely between pipelines, between code generation pipelines. Uh, after some basic configuration, you just run the graph object on the input files. So now I will introduce Yeti, uh, which stands for Yeti's Unextensible Telemetry Interface. Uh, Yeti is our application of the Fractal framework to interface generation for flight, ground, and development software. So the Yeti pipeline begins by ingesting ICD header files from which it extracts and sanitizes type declarations and catalogs preprocessor macros. Yeti traverses over these data types and generates unique hash-based message identifiers before passing the messages to the templating engine where it generates a number of things, uh, C structs with C++ wrapper classes that contain getters, setters, uh, deep copy and zero copy message transfer functions, uh, protobuf definitions with corresponding load and unload functions, uh, service message class wrappers with associated serializer and deserializer capabilities, middleware adapter layers with statically allocated message buffers and translation layers, uh, and lastly, Python bindings for all message types that are compiled into a loadable Python module. And this has been very useful for us. <clears throat> so um, Emergent Space Technologies has a broad range of capabilities. Uh, this includes simulation services, swarm guidance and navigation, fault isolation and recovery, distributed on orbit compute and tasking, uh, swarm level autonomous planning and execution, 3D and virtual reality data visualization, continuous integration and test services, and middleware agnostic app frameworks. The function of Yeti and Fractal is to tie them all together into a unified suite using data-driven interface generation. Removing the need for engineers to maintain interfaces by hand uh, dramatically improves integration time and reduces maintenance overhead. Um, as previously mentioned, uh, Fractal and Yeti see widespread use uh, at Emergent, as well as for external clients, uh, which include NASA Ames and Air Force Research Laboratory. Uh, for gear, our middleware abstraction layer and application framework, Yeti and Fractal are used to ingest service code and generate adapter layers for the MOSA of choice, which could be CFS, ROS, or an in-house solution. The selected MOSA can be swapped out at compile time. For Dasher, our state machine-based autonomy executive for RPO applications and swarm control, Yeti manages telemetry definitions and state machine configuration. Uh, for Ascent, our simulation environment, Yeti enables our runtime Python layer to communicate quickly and easily with external C and C++ flight software components. For Cephas, our cluster autonomy suite and Safer, our fault isolation and recovery system, Yeti manages telemetry definitions and generates adapter information to be used by gear for our MOSA abstraction layer. So across the board, Yeti is used to manage telemetry definitions and interfaces for our flight, ground, test, and simulation platforms. <clears throat> so here's a quick demo. Uh, in this demo, I feed the header shown on the left uh, into Yeti. Uh, as you can see, it has all the trappings of a good message definition, uh, including C linkage, include guards, namespacing, and a type def. Uh, note that it also includes the standard int system header. On the right is an example of a command line based workflow for Yeti, uh, although Fractal supports shell scripting and has bindings into CMake as well. Uh, so it can be part of your build system. You may notice that uh, Fractal traverses system headers and pulls in 11, I'm sorry, Yeti here, 
uh, traverses system headers and pulls in 11 standard library headers. Uh, this capability allows the developer to expose the full C standard library as syntax trees if desired. Also note that Yeti and Fractal are being run in a Docker container. Uh, the Fractal SDK is available for evaluation purposes with zero setup requirements beyond installing Docker and launching the SDK. Uh, however, it can, be also, it can also be installed natively uh, just with a single pip install command. Uh, so here are some example output artifacts. Uh, on the left is a YAML syntax tree that corresponds to the input header. Uh, once input headers have been ingested into Yeti, developers can use the YAML syntax trees as shown on the left as their canonical message definitions, if desired. On the right are a few snippets of generated code, including a telemetry packet uh, with a header, uh, and the getter for a generated C++ wrapper class. That's down here in the bottom. So Fractal is not limited to generating C++ code. Its flexible templating system allows it to generate anything the developer desires. Here, we generate LaTeX interface control documents for documentation purposes and use by the systems engineering team. In conclusion, uh, the advantages of using Fractal and Yeti have so far been numerous. Importing an existing legacy code base into Yeti is trivial. Uh, the developer only needs to build a list of headers to be imported and pass them to Yeti. Jinja templates only need to be written once, after which they can be used for all imported code and data types. Uh, transformation logic truly is reusable. We were able to take process nodes used for generating interfaces for our autonomy suite, Cephas, and apply them to gear our middleware abstraction layer and application framework without having to rewrite anything. Yeti and Fractal have proven to be cross-platform and will run on Mac, Windows, Linux, or any operating system with a Python interpreter and Clang toolchain. Um, they are readily controllable with Git or other version control systems, and they are extremely lightweight with minimal dependencies. <clears throat> so looking forward, Yeti and Fractal show many promising future capabilities. Since Fractal can understand all valid C and C++ syntax, future implementations of the framework could import legacy code bases and generate modern interfaces into archaic or inconsistent systems and architectures. In a more immediate context, Fractal could be used to rapidly integrate and test MATLAB algorithms in a flight context. Uh, by reusing process node logic from Gear, Fractal could ingest coder-generated C code generate software bus messages that correspond to the parameters and returns of MATLAB functions and S functions, uh, generate associated middleware bindings for ROS or CFS, and generate object code that invokes the desired MATLAB or S functions when an appropriate message is received on the software bus. Uh, such a system would enable a fully auto-generated pipeline for going from MATLAB prototyping code to testing in a flight-like context on flight hardware. Uh, thank you. That is all I have. Um, thanks so much for attending. Uh, and if you are interested in evaluating Yeti or Fractal for your project or mission, here is our contact information. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you.